Well, Christmas is coming alive in the city by the sea for Christmas at the Newport Mansions, which is where we find Michaela this morning. Once again, now you've already texted me and I saw just how beautiful things look there. So tell us more about what's happening, mm -hmm. Michaela. Yeah, you're right, Brendan. It does look beautiful. And even the drive in, I know it's kind of a messy commute, but there's something about the snow falling down and seeing the Christmas decorations here at the Elms for day two of Christmas at the Mansions Week. It really puts you in that festive spirit. John Rodman is the director of Museum Experience. And wow, John, there's a lot to experience while we're here. Good morning. Well, we put the white carpet out for you, first of all. <laughs> but there is so much going on. And, and even though it's a kind of a snowy morning, the mansions are open today. The Breakers, the Elms, Marble House, Perfect. we're open. So if somebody's got a school day with mm -hmm. some kids and you're trying to figure out what am I going to do with them, come on down to the mansions. There's yeah. a great children's tour at the Breakers. So it's on top of that, such a Christmas fantasy. Yes, it really is. And it puts you in that Christmas spirit, like I was mentioning earlier. And let's talk about some of the things that are going on. Those, those festive nights, the times that we can actually experience some of the homes, mm. um, unlike in the past. Well, not your own, shall yeah. we say. So <laughs> we call them the holiday evenings and they're Saturday nights. This Saturday night is sold out. Okay. But uh, going forward, the 14th, we have tickets for, and that's at the Breakers. Mm -hmm. We take down all the ropes. It's an open house. You don't have to follow a prescribed tour. Wow. We have some refreshments. We have live music. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to hear from those musicians a little later on in this morning's show. Then the following Saturday night, mm -hmm. which is the 28th, I'm sorry, which is the 21st, yeah. we have the only evening openings of this house and Marble House mm -hmm. all year long, wow. one night, both houses, one admission, live music, also refreshments. The ropes are down, so it's an open mm -hmm. house for those. And then on the 28th, we're back to the breakers, and we're doing swing. That, it sounds like so much fun. There's a trolley, I know, that can bring you from house to house as well. It really kind of puts you in the mood. Santa will um, be part of Christmas at the, at the mansions over the next month. What can we expect there? So Santa will be at Marble House this coming Sunday, and then the following Sunday, he will be right here at the Elms, and that's from noon to 3. So the kids are going to have plenty of opportunity to sit on Santa's knee and whisper their wishes. Mm -hmm. And you bring up the kids a lot. Like you said, there's a children's tour at the Breakers, yes. you said. Yes. So this really is a family-friendly place. I know we mentioned some of those holiday evenings. Maybe you want to take a date night. Um, but between Santa and even the gingerbread houses, trains, there's a lot to see. There is a lot to see. And it is it, it really is kid-friendly. It's mm -hmm. really an exciting time of year. And this is a fantasy. We know from the records that George Vanderbilt kept at Biltmore House mm -hmm. how they decorated. So we know that George and his brothers did observe Christmas, but right. exactly what we're doing here, it's a fantasy, but it's a fabulous mm -hmm. fantasy. I mean, trains at the breakers, gingerbread houses. Yeah, and not your average gingerbread houses. I mean, these don't have the little gumdrop things with walls falling no. over that you try and make at home. These are beautiful. Over the top, just mm -hmm. like they should be. Absolutely. Well, everything is a little bit over the top and grand here at the Newport Mansions, and rightfully so, because that's what you want around this time of year, this holiday season. John isn't going anywhere either. He's going to talk about um, the music coming up a little bit later on. So if you want to get in that festive spirit and you think maybe a, a tune or two will do that, we've got you covered. So stick around. Well, nothing gets us more set for the holidays than some festive holiday cheer, of course, especially inside the gorgeous Newport Mansions. And that's where Michaela is on this snowy morning. Good morning once again, Michaela. Hey, good morning. You're right. It's here at the Elms. The acoustics are perfect for a performance like this. So John joins us once again with two very special guests. Tell us about them and where we can find them. Well, we're, we've got a real treat for you. I talked about the performances in the holiday evenings a little earlier. And on the 14th, we're going to have the Larry Brown Swing Lane Band. Mm -hmm. And we've got two of their musicians here to give us a little Christmas spirit shot. And so on the keyboards is Michael Johnson. Mm -hmm. And the man doing the vocals is Jimmy Winners. All right, guys, take it away. Oh. 
night, holy night, all is gone, all is bright, brown young virgin. Jimmy, keep going and don't forget you guys can see them perform here at Christmas at the Mansions. We'll be here for the rest of the week as well, but we're not done for today, so stick around. We'll have more when we come back. Yeah, that's right, guys. And a reminder, too, that Marble House, the Elms, and the Breakers are all open for the holiday season. But there's actually another location you're going to want to make sure you visit, and that's Rosecliff. We had a chance to get a sneak peek at their new exhibition. It's time to switch out our exhibitions, which we do twice a year. So we have sent the Audubon birds away, and we are bringing in Tiffany glass, lamps, and windows. The name is known by many. The Tiffany & Company retailer that I think most people associate with the name, certainly, was started by a man named Charles Lewis Tiffany. But his son, Louis C. Tiffany, is the glass maker and the focus of our upcoming exhibition. Which can be seen on the second floor of Rosecliff. We're delighted to bring in this show, which is called Tiffany Glass Painting with Color and Light from a wonderful institution in New York, the Newstack Collection of Tiffany Glass. And they are unique in that they have a huge repository of the raw glass that was left over from Tiffany Studios when it closed in the 1930s. And they also have a wonderful collection of table lamps, floor lamps, windows, glass mosaics. So they're a very special institution. And they have a dedicated gallery space at the Queens Museum in New York, but they don't have a, a large museum of their own, so they put together these wonderful traveling shows so it's a wonderful reason to bring it to Newport. Roughly 20 pieces will be on display. We have five windows that are going to be in the long gallery here behind me and one of the hallmarks of the Tiffany Studios was that they were able to create these landscapes and other scenes using the glass itself. For instance uh, a figure wearing a flowing robe. Her robe is created out of what's called drapery glass so you get the special effects that way. Painstaking but beautiful. Many people will recognize the floral lampshades, so the peony lamp. We have a wisteria lamp that's going to be in the show, which is very recognizable and beautiful for those purple blossoms that comprise the shade. And we have laburnums. We have all sorts of different floral motifs, as well as two different dragonfly lampshades, which I know he's also known for. They're so sculptural, and the, the shades are so vast. I find those very special, and each is just incredibly unique. Speaking of unique, one of the features is um, a display of some of the raw glass that I just mentioned, which are very small pieces referred to as glass jewels. And there'll be about 100 pieces of those laying flat that people can see, so that's very exciting. The pieces began as luxury items. And then in the 1920s and 30s, they started to fall out of favor, and you could acquire them for uh, very small amounts of money, so they became accessible to the wider public. And then, of course, as we know now, they've gone up in value again. The new stats collection grew a lot over the years. The collection is named for a couple who were Austrian immigrants who moved to the U.S. and Mrs. Neustadt fell in love with the daffodil shade and had to have it. They went back later and acquired their first Tiffany lamp for $12.50 and then their collection just grew to this enormous extent. And Dr. Neustadt donated about 100 pieces to the New York Historical Society so they have a great uh, repository as well. There are even some forgeries in the collection. When Dr. Neustadt was collecting, he would sometimes make a mistake. Um, so they incorporate the forgeries into the show as a way of educating the public about topics such as uh, authenticity and connoisseurship. So there's a whole section devoted to what makes a Tiffany lamp authentic and people can compare and, and see if they can tell the difference. It is, it is hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> This traveling exhibition is a great addition in the winter months. It's going to completely transform our space and, of course, light up the winter months here in Newport. So we're, we're very excited to have it. 
Now, Ashley mentioned that that first lamp that the new stats collected cost them about $12.50. It's unknown exactly how much that lamp in particular is worth, but some Tiffany lamps have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it could be worth a pretty penny. Now, if you're interested in checking out that exhibition, it starts December 8th and runs for the next few months. Guys, day two of Christmas at the Mansions coming to a close. We'll have plenty more all week long, though. For now, though, we're going to send things back to you guys in the studio.